Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to be running as many pieces of John Deere equipment in one day as I possibly can. Are you ready? Today, we're at the John Deere testing facility in Iowa, and we are trying to get into the cab of as many of these as possible. We're gonna start our tour of John Deere equipment at the very beginning, where it all started, right here. Just a simple plow. This is probably only about one horsepower, meaning you need a horse connected to the front of it to run it. And let me just tell you, over the course of this video, you are going to see some major progressions in horsepower. If you didn't know, this is where John Deere got its start. All right, the first machine on our list is this brand new 2025 X9 Combine. Can you believe how big this thing is? Just look at me in relation to the track. Come on in, let's drive this thing. It is still springtime, so we're not actually harvesting anything here, but I am running the largest draper head and largest combine that I have ever driven. I'm gonna go ahead and swing my auger out right here, and we've got Grant in tractor and grain cart right next to me. We're going to be using machine sink, and so we are driving on our auto steer line here. The tractor is on the same line. It knows where the combine is, and it's going to be able to just follow right up underneath the auger, right where it needs to be every single time. So now that I have his tractor tracking with mine, I actually have control of Grant's tractor. And so with these arrows right here, I'm able to put him backwards just a little bit. <laughs> Look at this, ready? Let's move Grant forward. There he goes. With this camera, I can see right where my grain would be dumping. That was so cool. Should we hop in the tractor next? We are hopping in a 2025 John Deere 8R370. Should we see what the inside looks like? <sighs> Feels good to be back in a tractor cab, shall we? So now from the other POV here, got another operator in the combine. I am completely hands-free. Not only hands-free on the steering wheel, but not anything over here. And now the combine operator has complete control of my tractor. It would probably make it a lot harder to blame Gage for any spilled grain that we have on the farm. So I just hopped out of an R-Series tractor, and now we're moving on to something a little bit different. This is gonna be something that's a bit more accessible to those of you that live in residential areas but still want to be in an R-Series something. So the next John Deere piece of equipment that we're running is this John Deere Z370R electric lawnmower. If you've been following along on the channel, you've been seeing that we've been doing a lot with lawn care recently, especially with our John Deere tractors. And so today we're going to be shifting away from the gas and diesel and moving on to electric. Should we see how this thing works? I'm gonna hop right on. Instead of turning a key, I'm just going to hold a power button. It's turned on and I am ready to go. It's on right now, and you can't hear a thing. It's like riding a go-kart. Should we turn our blades on? This thing has a two acre mowing capability on one charge and recharges fully in just six hours. All right, the next tractor in our lineup is a super popular one. This is a very requested tractor. I've actually demoed a tractor very similar to this, but it is time to drive it around today because we are including it in our lineup of all the John Deere pieces of equipment we can drive in one day. What I have sitting behind me is an almost brand new John Deere 8RX. This is the cool one. It's got four tracks. This one has the integrated tanks on the back of it. It's not hooked up to anything right now, but we're still gonna get in and drive it. Get this baby fired up. Man, that tractor's so nice. On to the next one. Next in the lineup, we have a 6R250. This tractor is a little bit smaller than what we're used to, and behind it is a baler, which is something I have never used. Let's give this thing a swirl. Check this thing out. This cab is way different than what I am used to. 
it's got this very cool joystick which is different even from the combine but the secondary one check out this baler got the combine and the grain cart going over here and we've got this really cute little baler tractor going on over here next up is an 8rt 370 i have never driven a two-track tractor like this i have driven ones with row crop tires ones with big lsws on it four tracks but never just two tracks so this is going to be a brand new experience for me let's test it out I think this would be really great for certain people on certain operations. I think maybe after I ran it for a couple days, I would get used to it. But right off the bat, it is just very much different from anything else I'm used to. I don't know if I necessarily like it. I just think it would take a lot of getting used to. Steering is very touchy. You make very small adjustments and it moves a lot. I can definitely see why some people have these on their operations. I don't think it's the right tractor for me. I think we'll stick with our row crop tires. So I know we've already driven a two-track tractor, but they saw us driving that one around and said, no, 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 you have to drive this one. So we're considering this a different tractor because it is, even though it's a two-track, because this thing is straight piped. So add another thing first to the list. I have never driven a straight piped tractor. Today is the day. So let's fire this thing up, see how it sounds. Next up, what you see behind me is a John Deere 9630. This is a huge rig. I have no use for this on my farm, but let me tell you what, it is so cool to look at and I bet even cooler to drive. So let's give it a try. Oh my goodness, I wish I could send a smell through the phone. What you guys are seeing right here is way more reminiscent to the cab of a tractor that I would have grown up in. And there's something very particular about the smell of these seats and just kind of like the general dust that collects over everything. There's so much nostalgia in this kind of tractor cab setup for me. A lot of happy memories for sure. Dad, I wish you were here right now. You would, you would love this right now. Cabs have certainly changed a lot in recent years. My goodness. Folks, we are just doing lots of first todays. I genuinely think this is maybe the biggest tractor I have ever driven in my life. I absolutely love it. I wish I could accurately portray how cool it feels to be up this high and in an articulating tractor at that, huge tires on it. This is like what dreams are made of right here. That was cool. I don't know how we're going to top that tractor. Let's give it a try though. 
Well, what could be better than that huge tractor? Probably one of the few things that could one-up that is what is sitting behind me, and that is a cotton picker. I have ridden in these once, I've never driven one. If you've never seen a cotton plant, they're pretty much just like little trees, and each of those plants goes down the row just like this, and the cotton is picked right off with all of these little tines right in here. Although the outside and the head looks a lot different than the combine, the inside is all very, very familiar. It's weird not to have a bunch of stuff in front of you. It's all very close down there. And uh, you can't exactly see the corn filling up the tank behind you. Maybe I should go back to Texas and tour another farm. Next up is yet another thing that I have never driven. We are gonna be hopping up in this enormous chopper. Now, usually there would be a big head on the front of this, but remember, we're not being picky. We're driving as many pieces of John Deere equipment in one day as we can. So, this is here, we're gonna take it. This thing looks brand new. It is brand new. So if there was a big chopping head on this, we would be going through perhaps some kind of corn field and we would be chopping silage and all of that corn would be coming up through the header and spit right out this big yellow thing here and into a wagon and a tractor that would be driving beside me. But for now, we just get to be up in the cab experiencing this thing and let me tell you, this thing moves. It is not slow for such a big machine. You could really cover some acres in this thing. Next up is a W235R, and this is going to be a swather. So this does have the front attachment on it. This is going to be essentially like a giant lawnmower, and I have heard that it steers just like a zero-turn lawnmower. So let's try it out for ourselves. This is an interesting cab, different seat material, but very similar setup over here. I thought the two-track machine was touchy. I think this might even have it beat. You just barely nudge the steering wheel and you are doing donuts. Adding another one onto the list, this is a 5055D. This is probably a little bit more accessible for maybe like the lawn care aspect of things. It's a little bit more modestly sized, I would, that's how I would describe it. But I have to say, it's pretty cute and probably a lot nicer than our open cab 4020s. This has a little bit more tech on it. We are in a new outfit. We got the hard hat on, we got the vest on, and we are in a different color of John Deere equipment. Right now, instead of being on the ag side, we are getting to hop in some construction equipment. And this is really going to up the number of equipment pieces that I'm able to drive in one day. So check out what we have behind me. This is my very first time driving construction equipment, and I have to say, I'm pretty excited. This thing is equipped with all of the latest technology. John Deere doesn't just work with farms, but actually this equipment is used in building parking lots, roads, all kinds of residential neighborhoods. Very, very cool. And today I'm going to get to move some dirt around. Should we check out the cab? This thing doesn't quite look like the inside of a tractor cab. It's a lot different. This is what controls my blade. This is what controls all of my steering. Here I've got all of my machine specs. And down here, I have this smart grade technology. And so this is actually going to, when I activate it, control the pitch and grade and movement of my blade for me. 
So I have a project loaded in here and it's actually just going to automate everything. So I choose the speed in which I'm driving forward, but this is really controlling the machine. Isn't that awesome? Let's get to work. Check this out. I'm building a parking lot right now. <laughs> this is awesome. Four, for some reason has always been my favorite number and so I'm very excited to be driving this big loader which is a 644 P tier. Put my nice orange safety belt on right here. Put this armrest down right here. The next machine we're operating on the construction side of things is a legit road grader. Now, historically, this has been by far the most difficult piece of construction equipment to run, or so I'm told. As you can see, there are a ton of different buttons, and that is because literally every single piece on this machine moves. It articulates, the blade spins back and forth and pitches in different levels. The whole machine can twist like this and this. But with this smart grade technology, the thing drives itself. So inputted in this screen right here, we have a racetrack program, and that's what we're going to be building today. And so I'm going to start going. I have a couple buttons that I need to hit. I will be doing all of the steering and deciding which track I actually go in, but the blade in the machine is going to be automatically adjusting itself based on this program that's been input in here. So this is definitely something that is out of my wheelhouse, but it is getting me one machine closer to driving as many pieces of John Deere equipment in one day as I can. Okay, let's build a racetrack. Look at that blade pushing dirt down there. I'm doing all of my steering from this joystick right here, left and right. But look at the other option I have. I can steer with the world's tiniest steering wheel, smaller than a lawnmower steering wheel. Isn't that so silly? Instead, I'm just going to shift over to the right, see my tires turn like that, and I'll start making our turn. Next on the construction side, we're going to be running this John Deere 210 P-tier excavator, and we're going to be digging a trench for a water line. Let's do it. So this thing looks kind of similar to the dozer in the fact that we've got two stick controls but these both run my arm and my bucket to dig, and this is how I actually drive and steer around. But this is equipped with the same technology as the dozer, right here, this smart grade technology. So I dig out a good amount, and then as soon as I get down to my hard stop grade that I wanna be at, it goes into auto grade mode, and it will actually grade the bottom of the trench for me. I don't have to do that. Isn't that awesome? a lot of concentration. Wow.
Next on the list is a little bit smaller version of the excavator. This is a 75P series. You know, very cool. I think it was made for tractors, not excavators. Let's go drive one of those. Next up is an 8R340. This one is hooked up to a planter. There's cameras integrated into this planter that we're gonna be able to see from in the cab. Feels like we just got done planting. Here I am back at it. Turn automation, folks. So instead of having to worry about when the end of the pass is coming up, I can actually focus on the planter and what it is doing behind me. Re-entering the field boundary and the planter is even going to set itself down for me. I don't even have to worry about that. Look at that. Now with my planter down, I'm actually running can see my furrow vision. This is a camera that is actually showing me the furrow as it opens in real time. Next up is a 616R sprayer, and this is equipped with the brand new Sea and Spray technology. What is our top speed here? 15. 15 for spraying? Oh, wow, it actually is so smooth in here. I'm impressed. And we're seeing on our map right here, our coverage, orange spots, that's where we're actually spraying. Going through a draw, took it like a champ. And our we have auto boom set, so it's going to maintain the boom distance away from the ground. You could fly through a field in one of these things. This is actually what the cameras on the boom are seeing. Purple is the weeds, green are the good plants. Just some confirmation that the camera is out there actually working. Next on our list, we've got a loader tractor. This one is a lot newer than the one we have on our farm. All right, and now we have come to the mother of all tractors right here. What you see behind me is a 9620RX, meaning this is huge. It's a nine series tractor, okay, but it's an R series tractor, but it has four tracks on it. And it is articulating with the integrated tanks. This thing is an absolute beast. It takes even just a different type of ladder to get up into this thing. Let's see what the inside of the cab looks like, shall we? I think I can see home from here. I can't tell you how cool this feels right now. Driving this thing out in the dirt, wow. It is a special type of farmer that gets to run these things every day. I did it. Now this 
might be the biggest tractor I've ever driven. I think we've beaten so many personal records today. It's crazy, I can't even keep track. The next tractor I'm going to be running is an 8R410, but instead of being in the cab, I'm going to be running it entirely from this phone. Okay, so we're definitely going to count this. Doesn't look like it right now, but I am actually operating a tractor as we speak. I am running it autonomously from my phone. So we're gonna count this, because I am technically still running it, but that tractor is doing field work and there is not a soul in the cab. How cool is that? All being operated from this phone. There's cameras and sensors absolutely everywhere, and it's just doing field work. I don't even have to sit in the cab. Infield working speed is set at 6.7 miles an hour, turn speed at 3.5. This is the future of farming, fully autonomous. And to round up the video, after all of these machines that we've driven, we've got one last one that we need to drive. Diesel John Deere Gator. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe and like for more, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.